everyone, I'm Josie Weiss and today we're going to be reading Disney Pixar Movie Collection Up. Now this story has my heart all the flutter. <laughs> Here we go. The lights in the movie theatre dimmed and the film started to roll. Young Carl Friedrichsen gazed up at the screen in awe. There, larger than life was his idol, Charles Muntz the world-famous explorer. The newsreel showed Munt boarding his custom-made dirigible, The Spirit of Adventure, accompanied by his trusty dogs. They were off to South America to capture a creature known as the Monster of Paradise Falls. Adventure is out there, Munt declared. When Carl grew up, he wanted to be an adventurer just like Charles Muntz. That afternoon, Carl pretended a balloon was his airship and imagined that he was Charles Muntz on a daring expedition. While he was playing, he heard someone claim, Adventure is out there! Carl stopped in his tracks. That was exactly what Muntz always said. The voice seemed to come from inside an old, empty house. Carl went into the house to investigate. A girl named Ellie was flying her own make-believe airship. Don't you know that this is an exclusive club? Ellie cried when she saw Carl. Only explorers get in here. But Ellie quickly realised that Carl was an explorer too. She fastened a pin made from a grape soda bottle cap to his shirt. You and me, we're in a club now, she told him. Carl and Ellie had their first adventure that very afternoon. Carl fell and broke his arm. That night, Ellie went to Carl's house to cheer him up. She brought her adventure book to show him. When I get big, I'm going where Charles Muntz is going. South America. I'm going to move my clubhouse there and park it right next to the falls. Ellie pointed to a picture she had drawn of her clubhouse beside Paradise Falls. When she flipped to a page marked Stuff I'm Going to Do, the pages after that were blank. I'm saving these for all the adventures I'm going to have, she told Carl. Ellie made Carl promise to take them to Paradise Falls some day. Swear you'll take us, cross your heart, she ordered. Carl did. He thought Ellie was quite a girl. Carl and Ellie were best friends from that moment on. When they grew up, they got married and moved into the old place that had been their clubhouse. They fixed up their home to look just like the drawing in Ellie's adventure book. Carl and Ellie didn't become explorers though. They both had jobs at the zoo. Carl sold balloons from a cart and Ellie looked after the animals. They were happy together. But they still dreamed of travelling to Paradise Falls. They tried to save all their spare change in a jar, hoping they would eventually have enough money for the trip but they could never quite collect enough. The years went by and Carl and Ellie grew older. After Ellie passed away, Carl kept everything just as she had liked it, so the house would always remind him of her. But it wasn't the same. He missed Ellie. Year after year, Carl's house stayed the same. But around him, things were changing. The houses in Carl's neighbourhood had all been torn down to make room for bigger buildings. Now, when he walked out his front door, he saw bulldozers, dump trucks and dust. The builder of the new high-rises wanted to buy Carl and Ellie's house so he could tear it down too. But Carl refused to sell it. The house meant too much to him. One day, Carl heard a knock at his door. A boy in a uniform was standing on his porch. Good afternoon, said the boy. My name is Russell and I'm a junior wilderness explorer. 
Are you in need of assistance today, sir? No, said Carl. He didn't want help. He just wanted to be left alone. But Russell wouldn't leave. He wanted to help Carl so that he could earn his assisting the elderly badge. If I get it, I will become a senior wilderness explorer, Russell explained. To get rid of Russell, Carl gave him a task. He asked him to find a bird called a snipe that had been eating his flowers. I think its burrow is two blocks down, Carl fibbed. I'll find him, Mr. Fredrickson, exclaimed Russell. He set off to find the bird, not knowing that there was no snipe. Carl had made the whole thing up. Soon after that, Carl received some bad news. He was being forced out of his home and sent to live in a retirement home. Carl didn't want to leave his house. All his memories of Ellie were there. That night, Carl sat in his living room looking through Ellie's adventure book. He remembered her dream of going to South America. The next morning, two nurses arrived to drive Carl to the retirement home. I'll meet you at the van in a minute, Carl told them, handing over his suitcase. I want to say one last goodbye to this old place. As the nurses walked back to their van, a huge shadow fell over them. They turned to see thousands of balloons rising into the air. A moment later, Carl's whole house lifted off. So long, boys, Carl yelled out the window. Carl steered the flying house using ropes attached to the weather vane. He checked his compass and his map and charted a course to South America. We're on our way, Ellie, he said happily. Carl was finally keeping his promise. He was taking their house to Paradise Falls. Knock, knock, knock. A sound at the door startled Carl. Who could be knocking? He was thousands of feet up in the air. It was Russell. He'd been under Carl's porch, looking for the snipe when the house lifted off. Please let me in, begged Russell. What choice did Carl have? He let Russell come inside. Carl hated to stop, but he knew he had to land and send Russell home. He started to cut some of the balloons free. Meanwhile, Russell was watching the clouds outside. There's a big storm coming, he said, but Carl didn't hear him. Suddenly, a flash of lightning lit up the living room. They were flying right into the storm. Carl tried desperately to steer the house away from the dark clouds, but it was too late. Thunder rattled the windows and the furniture tumbled as the house tossed in the wind. Finally, Carl gave up steering. He darted this way and that, trying to save Ellie's belongings. At last, exhausted, he fell asleep. When Carl woke up, the storm was over. I steered us down, Russell told him proudly. We're in South America. Carl and Russell stepped onto the porch to take a look around. Just then, the house crash landed and sent them both flying. My house, Carl cried as it started to float away. Grabbing hold of the garden hose, he and Russell managed to pull the house back down. While Carl struggled to catch his breath, the fog cleared. And there, just ahead, was Paradise Falls. It looked just like Ellie's picture. We made it, Carl shouted. We could float right over there. There was just one problem. They couldn't get back into the house. It was hovering too high off the ground. Then Russell had an idea. They could walk the house to the falls. They made harnesses out of the garden hose and set out for the falls, pulling the house behind them. This is already fun, isn't it? Russell said as they trudged along. By the time we get there, you're going to feel so assisted. After a while, they stopped to take a break. In the jungle, Russell spotted strange footprints in the mud. As he followed the tracks, Russell nibbled a chocolate bar. Suddenly, a big 
poked out of the bushes and nibbled it too. Don't be afraid, Russell told the creature. I am a wilderness explorer, so I am a friend to all of nature. He used more chocolate to lure it out of the bushes. Then the creature emerged. Russell gasped. It was the biggest bird he had ever seen. Russell named the bird Kevin. He couldn't wait to show his friend to Carl. Aight, Carl hollered when he saw it. What is that? It's a snipe, Russell answered. I don't know what it is, Carl replied. But it's definitely not a snipe. He pulled Russell away from the strange bird. The bird pulled Russell back. It seemed to like him. Can we keep him? Russell asked Carl. No, said Carl. Then they set out for the falls again. But Russell didn't want to leave Kevin behind. He left a trail of chocolate for the bird to follow. They hadn't gone far when they met a dog. Hi there, said the dog. My name is Doug. A talking dog? Carl and Russell were stunned. My master made this collar so that I may talk, Doug explained, showing them the high-tech gadget. My pack sent me on a special mission. Have you seen a bird? Suddenly, Kevin flew out of the bushes and tackled Doug. Hey, that is the bird. May I take your bird as my prisoner? Doug asked Carl. Yes, yes, take it, Carl told him. Russell wanted to keep Doug as a pet. No, said Carl. But he's a talking dog, Russell exclaimed. Carl didn't want a talking dog. He didn't want a bird either. He just wanted to get to the falls. Russell followed Carl. Kevin followed Russell. And Doug followed the bird. Please be my prisoner, Doug begged Kevin. That night, they stopped to rest. Russell was worried. Doug says he wants to take Kevin prisoner. We have to protect him, he told Carl. Carl finally agreed that Kevin could come with them to the falls. Promise you won't leave him? Cross your heart? Russell asked Carl. Carl thought for a moment. He'd only crossed his heart for Ellie. When he'd promised he would take her to Paradise Falls. Cross my heart, he told Russell at last. The next morning, they found Kevin on the roof of the house. The bird was calling toward the rocks in the distance. The bird is calling to her babies, exclaimed Doug. Kevin's a girl? Russell asked in surprise. He'd had no idea. Kevin hopped down from the roof and set off for her home. Russell wanted to go with her, but Carl was in a hurry to get to the falls. She can take care of herself, he told Russell. Suddenly, three fierce dogs burst from the bushes. They surrounded Carl, Russell and Doug. Where's the bird? snarled Alpha, the dog's leader. The dogs were part of Doug's pack. When they found out that Doug had lost the bird, they insisted on taking the travellers back to their master. We're going to the falls. We're not going with you, Carl protested. The dogs bared their teeth. Carl realised he had no choice. The dogs led Carl and Russell to an enormous cave. An old man stood at the entrance, surrounded by more vicious-looking dogs. When the man saw Carl's house, he laughed in astonishment. He had thought that Carl and Russell were explorers, but real explorers wouldn't come in a floating house. My dogs made a mistake, he told Carl. He bid Carl and Russell a good journey and turned to leave. Carl thought the man looked familiar. Wait, he said, are you Charles Muntz? Adventure is out there, Muntz replied. Carl couldn't believe he was finally meeting his childhood hero. My wife and I, we're your biggest fans, he said, shaking Muntz's hand. Muntz was pleased to have visitors after so many years. He invited Carl and Russell inside to rest. A giant airship was parked inside the cave. Carl recognised it right away. It was the spirit of adventure. When Doug tried to follow his new friends inside, Alpha and the other dogs blocked his way. 
He has lost the bird, declared Alpha. Put him in the cone of shame. They left Doug outside wearing his humiliating punishment. I do not like the cone of shame, Doug said sadly. On board the airship, the dogs served Carl and Russell dinner, while Munt showed them his research on the monster of Paradise Falls. I spent a lifetime tracking this creature, Munt said. Hey, that looks like Kevin, said Russell. Kevin? Munt asked. That's my new giant bird pet, Russell explained. I trained it to follow us. Munt became very angry. He thought Carl and Russell were trying to steal the bird from him. As the dogs surrounded them, Carl realized that he and Russell were in danger. At that moment, they heard a wail outside. Kevin had followed Carl and Russell into the cave. All the dogs began to bark. In the confusion, Carl and Russell slipped away. Get them, Munts roared at his dogs. Carl and Russell untied the house and started to run. The snarling dog pack came tearing after them. Kevin scooped Russell and Carl onto her back and raced for the cave opening with the house still floating behind. They had almost made it out of the cave when Russell fell from Kevin's back. Munster's dogs were closing when suddenly an avalanche of rocks tumbled down blocking the dog's pack. Go on master, I will stop the dogs, cried Doug. He had come to rescue Carl and Russell. But Doug didn't stop the dogs for long. Alpha knocked him aside and jumped between the rocks. The rest of the dogs followed. Outside, Carl, Russell and Kevin had come to the edge of a cliff. They were trapped. Luckily, the wind lifted the house into the air, taking Carl and his friends with it. Alpha clamped down on Kevin's leg to try to stop them, but he lost grip. The house floated over the gap to safety, where the dogs plummeted into the water below. Carl and his friends had escaped, but Kevin's leg was badly injured. Russell realised she would need their help to get back to her babies. Carl wanted to get to the falls, but he knew they couldn't leave Kevin. All right, but we've got to hurry, he said. The wilderness isn't quite what I expected, Russell said as they walked along. It's kind of wild. Carl nodded. He knew what Russell meant. They had almost reached Kevin's home when a spotlight appeared out of nowhere. Months had followed them in the spirit of adventure. Before Kevin could escape, Annette shot from the airship and trapped her. Russell, give me your knife, Carl commanded. He soared at the net, trying to set Kevin free. Get away from my bird, Munts snarled. Carl looked up and gasped. Munts had his house. As Carl watched, Munts threw his lantern and set the house on fire. Carl couldn't let his house go up in smoke. All his memories of Ellie were there. Dropping the knife, he ran to the house and began to beat out the flames. The dogs swarmed around the bird and dragged her onto the airship. Let her go, yelled Russell, chasing after them. Munts pulled up the gangplank and lifted off with his prize bird. Russell was heartbroken. You gave away Kevin, he accused Carl. Carl felt terrible. But what could he do now? I didn't ask for any of this, he said. And if you hadn't shown up, none of this would have happened, he told Doug. Bad dog. Doug slunk away with his tail between his legs. Now, Carl declared to Russell, whether you assist me or not, I'm going to Paradise Falls if it kills me. Russell did not help Carl this time. Carl towed the house the rest of the way to the falls by himself. He placed it exactly where it appeared in Ellie's drawing. Russell was still angry at Carl. Here, he said, throwing his wilderness explorer sash on the ground. I don't want this anymore. With a sigh, Carl picked up the sash and went into his house. Carl found Ellie's adventure book and put her drawing back inside. He had kept his promise. 
but he still felt sad. He wished that Ellie could have had the adventure she'd always wanted. Carl flipped through the book until he could got to the page marked Stuff I'm Going to Do. He turned to the next page, expecting it to be blank. But to his astonishment, all of the following pages were filled with photographs of the two of them over the years. On the last page, Carl found a message from Ellie. Thanks for the adventure. Now go have a new one. Carl smiled, realising that Ellie had gotten her wish after all. Their life together had been an the adventure. Suddenly, Carl heard something on the roof. He hurried outside and saw Russell gripping a bunch of balloons and Carl's leaf blower. I'm going to help Kevin even if you won't, Russell shouted as he rose into the air. No, Kevin, Carl cried. He knew he had to go after Russell before something terrible happened, but the house wouldn't budge. The balloons had lost too much air. Frustrated, Carl threw a chair off the porch. The house bobbed a little. That gave him an idea. He began throwing everything out of the house. Carl had realised he hadn't needed those things. His friends were more important. Slowly, the house began to rise. Carl was on his way. As Carl searched the sky for a sign of Russell, he heard a knock on the door. Russell? He asked hopefully, but this time it was Doug. I was hiding under your porch because I love you. Can I stay? The dog asked. Well, you're my dog, aren't you? And I'm your master, replied Carl. Doug was overjoyed. Together, they set out to rescue Russell. The house flew through a cloud and Carl spotted the spirit of adventure ahead. As he watched, the gangplank suddenly lowered in mid-air. Something was sliding down it. With a gasp, Carl realised it was Russell. The boy was tied to a chair and he was about to fall into thin air. Carl grabbed the garden hose. Using it like a rope, he swung over the airship and caught Russell just in time. Once Kevin was safe inside the house, Carl and Doug went back for Kevin. Months had locked the bird in a cage, guarded by his dog pack. Carl grabbed a tennis ball from his cane. Who wants the ball? He called to the dogs. I do, I do. The dogs jumped up and down. Carl threw the ball and the dogs chased it right out the door. Carl locked the door behind them, then set Kevin free. Suddenly, Munts appeared, swinging a sword. Carl blocked it with his cane. As Carl battled Munts, Doug took on Alpha and the dog pack. Meanwhile, outside, Russell was having problems of his own. He'd accidentally fallen from the house. Russell dangled from one end of the garden hose, while dogs in fighter planes buzzed around him, trying to bring the house down. Finally, Carl escaped from months. He made it back to the house with Doug and Kevin. They started to fly away when, bang! With a pop of balloons, the house plunged downwards. It struck the top of the airship and Carl toppled out. Munz saw his chance. He charged into the house to get the bird. Carl had to save his friends. Hang on, Kevin, he yelled to Russell and Doug. Pulling a bar of chocolate from his pocket, Carl waved it and cried, Bird! Chocolate! Kevin ran towards the chocolate, dragging Russell and Doug with her. They made it to the airship just before the house slid off the edge. Munts, however, wasn't so lucky. His foot caught on a bunch of balloons and he drifted away. Sorry about your house, Mr. Fredrickson. Russell said as they watched it disappear into the clouds. You know, said Carl, it's just a house. He had realised something important. He didn't need the house to remind him of Ellie because Ellie would always be in his heart. Carl and his friends helped Kevin get back to her family. After a visit with the fuzzy little chicks, it was time to go. They called goodbye to Kevin then climbed aboard the spirit of adventure. Carl and Russell were going home too. Back home, 
Russell received his final badge and became a senior wilderness explorer. Carl came to the ceremony to pin on the badge. Russell, for performing above and beyond the call of duty, I would like to award you the highest honour I can bestow, Carl said. He fastened the grape soda cap pin to Russell's sash. The Ellie Badge Wow, Russell cried with a salute. Carl smiled, knowing that he and his new friends had many adventures ahead of them. I wonder how many balloons I'd need to float up into the sky like the house. <laughs> but thanks for watching everyone. If you liked this video, hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye!